How you guys doing today? So right now, my number one focus and the staff focus is the boys, is the players. That we make sure that they're okay. I appreciate Trev and administration for showing faith in me to lead the program. This is about Nebraska football. It's bigger than me than anyone else. And I want y'all to understand that. It's bigger than me than anyone else. I want to thank the fans for continuing to support us and, and to ride with us and to stay with us through thick and thin. You, they, they've done that. I want you to know this is a, a great opportunity for me and my family. We understand that. We're here to represent the University of Nebraska to the fullest. Any questions? What changes, what, what changes you're going to make in the day-to-day operation? The, the, the practice schedule, um, just the, the off day. The off day is now going to be on Mondays. We'll bring them in on Sundays. But everything else will stay the same. Over the last 48 hours, like for you, and what was the message you wanted to really get across to your team when you met with them for the first time within your new role? It's a little weird, you know. Didn't wake up Sunday morning knowing this was going to happen, but it did. I had to accept it. And my message to the team was, I know you're hurting. Frost is like a brother to me. He gave me an opportunity to come here and coach at my alma mater, coach at the University of Nebraska. I would always love him and always appreciate him. I was always respect him. The kids would always love him. But I know they were hurting. But at the end of the day, it's gonna, that ball's going to kick off on Saturday. So mentally, we had to get him back and get him ready. Coach, first African American head coach at your alma mater. Explain what that means. Like I said, it's about Nebraska football. It's bigger than me. I haven't really thought about that because I, I've been a football coach. I've been a black football coach all my life, but I haven't thought about that. I was, I'm more concerned about the boys and getting the boys ready to play on Saturday. It's bigger than me. This can create the idea of a fresh start, a, a spark. How do, you, how do you bring that to a team in a short week, not a full off season? That this is start from scratch. Just like you said. We tell them we start from scratch. We move everything, everything to the past, and we start from here. We have nine, we have nine more opportunities, and we're capable of winning games. And that's when they understand the first, the first opportunity is this weekend against OU. A really, a really, really good opponent, really good football team. In what ways do you address the issues on defense in, in your new role? Well, I met with Coach, Coach Shins. And um, we're going to play faster. We're going to tackle in practice. We're going to detail what we're doing with our kids. We're going to make our kids hold themselves accountable. And we try to fix the problems. Trev said the other day that he knew our, a guy who's going to give this team hope, how will you do that? Confidence and let them know that I believe in them. Block out the noise, block out the noise, what everybody's saying. And come, come, to, the, come to the building every day, to pre prepare to win that practice. And knowing that you're capable of getting the job done and don't doubt yourself. And that's what I'm feeding them. I'm feeding them confidence. I think everything, I mean, I think everything has to do with relationships. And I, had, I have a pretty good relationships with a pretty good percentage of the team. And I think they understand that. I think you said that the players are hurting. How have you seen them handle the last 48 hours? Like champs. Like champs. <coughs> the guy that recruited them sat in their living room is no longer there. I'm sure we've all been in that situation before. 
So understand how you would feel. But they understand that they play for University of Nebraska, and it's time to move on, and it's time to get ready for OU on Saturday. They understand it, but they handle it like champs. They bounce, they bounce back today. Mickey, will you still run the wide receiver room as the head coach, or will someone else kind of handle that for you now? Cash is going to handle that, the day-to-day -day operations, but I'll, I'll still be involved with it. Does he become now the, a full-time assistant? Yes, sir. Mickey, what would you say uh, in you, your mind, what was the number one issue for this team the last three weeks, and how do you fix that going forward? The number one issue the last three weeks, we haven't played well in three phases of, of the game. So now we got to get better on offense, defense, and special teams. That's how you win games, and that's what we have to do. You can't just put it on offense. You can't just put it on the defense. You can't just put it on the special teams. Everybody has to pull on the same side of the rope, and that's what we're going to. That's what we're going to continue to to to, um, to talk to the team about and get them to do. Mickey, I mean, you've been an offensive-minded coach for most of your time recently. So going back to on defense, how is that going to play into getting the defense back to where they kind of need to be, where you'd like them to be? Well, when you're an offensive coach, you better understand defense where they should be. And I always use my brother for example. He was a college quarterback, but he was a defensive back in the NFL. He was a college quarterback. Now he's a DC in the NFL. So you got to know what's going on on the side of the ball. You know where they should be. It's football, guys. It's either four down or three down. It's either two high or one high. I know your family is a tight inner circle just with coaching too. Did you talk, did you talk to Vance and uh, you know, Terry, some of those guys is uh, after you took this job and what were the what was that feedback like, I guess? No, we talk every day. We talk every day. We um, we're really tight. We don't have too many friends in this industry. But we have each other. But we talk and um you can I can lean on my brother Vance. I can lean on my cousin Terry, I can lean on my brother Sammy, my cousin Derek. I can lean on them because one thing they're gonna do, they're gonna be truthful for what they tell me and I respect their opinion. Mickey, you got nine games to go. What's a real goal? What's it? What do you hope happens here? Well, we got nine games left, right? Well, as a coach, you got to stand up here and say we're trying to win nine games, but we're not worrying about nine games right now. Remember, I just said what we worrying about this game this week. So we got to take this one at a time with these kids. We got to take this one at a time with this staff. So we're going to take one week at a time, and then when we get the nine, then we'll see where we're at. But this week, the most important thing right now is this week is get preparing to get ready for OU. Mickey, uh, you had said that, this, that you know that Nebraska football is, is more than just about one person, uh, but you also said that your family and you look at this as an opportunity. So, um, Trev Alberts had said the other day that you know see how things go, but you very well could be a candidate for the permanent job. Is that something that you want? I think when you accept the interim job as a head coach, I think that's that's the opportunity that you're working for, is to is to become the head coach. But we understand what goes along with this profession. It's wins and losses, and that's what it's going to depend on. Mickey, what does the Oklahoma rivalry mean to you, having played here and played there? Well, you know, I, I played in the Big Eight, where we had to face them. We had to face them every year, and it was always a big game. You know, I have um, I have friends over there. You know, and I, I um, they're excited, but um, it means a lot. It means a lot to see OU come in here because you know when they went to the Big Twelve, it kind of you know, you know, kind of split it a little bit. But it's a it's an exciting time. It just brings back old memories. Mickey, have you had a chance to talk to Coach Osborne since you've taken the job? Yes, we visited yesterday. What advice did Coach have for you? Well, he still talks to me like I'm a 19 year old, but um, <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> But um, you know, he, he he gave me good advice that he believes in what 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 I'm gonna do and and um, you know, and and discuss what what he thinks we need to do. And I don't think I need to go into that what our conversation was about. But um, he still believes in Nebraska football, and you know, and and he's a still he's still a, a wise guy. He's still a wise. He's really wise. His wisdom is still there. So it's good. It was good to t talk to him yesterday, and and, I, and I'll do that weekly with him. Has you shifted any other duties on the defensive side of the ball in terms of who coaches what? Well, um, Shin, Shin's, he was already back there with the nickels, and we kind of just let him work, you know, with the safeties so we can give them some, you know, some independent, you know, coaching, you know, and, and, and Fisher would go straight to the corners and, and the nickels. 
But, you know, if, if you look around the country, everybody in the country has two DB coaches because it's two different positions, safeties and corners. If you look at the NFL, they got two DB coaches. We were the only one in the country, I think, had one DB coach. That's Fish has two eyes. You got four guys back there. You can't see all of that. So it makes sense to have a, 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 safety, a coach back there with the safeties. And usually it's the coordinator. And that's why we decided to put Shen in. He agreed because we got to do what's going to help us get better. He's not talking this week, and you are, so I guess I'll ask you. When you look at that, some of the, pl the big plays, the run plays against Georgia Southern, what, what, what do you think was, was going on with the safeties, and what were they supposed to be doing? What didn't they do that kind of Well, I think, you know, anytime they have long runs, you know, it's, it's gap integrity. you got, you got to be in your gap, and, um, you know, we, and we got to fix that. We, they watch the film, and we see what's going on, and, you know, it's gap. I mean, you guys know that. I mean, you know, you just don't – bust a big run with no with somebody there in the gap. If somebody's not in the gap, they're going to give a big run. That's things we got to fix, and, and that's what we're working on. You had a, one of your players talk uh, to the media on Sunday, and, and is new. Uh, he's been here, I think, maybe five months. You've been here five months. He said there's a losing culture here, and that team players here just don't know how to win. How do you feel about, A, that comment, and <clears throat> maybe how you can fix that in a short amount of time? Well, I mean... We haven't been winning here, okay? But I wouldn't say it's a losing culture because I, um, a losing culture is kids that don't come to work, you know? Now, these kids don't play in a lot of tight games, you know? I don't, I don't think they've ever been blown out. They're playing in a lot of tight games, so now we got to figure out how to get them over the hump, you know, how to get over the hump, and then I got to do a better job with, with the players before they go to interviews and make comments like that. You uh like just how important was that to get on the same page with them and were you happy with you know the feedback you got from that yes because at the end of the day they don't sign with a coach they sign with the university and, and you had to make that clear you know to them that they signed with the university but you know all the committed kids they were they were in good shape they were in good shape now you got to understand these kids are 2022 now they bounce back you know it's it's you know so they're gonna be okay the sixth ranked team coming in, the, in this week on sixth ranked team in the country. I mean, how big of an opportunity is that for you in your first game and also for the team to kind of put this back where you guys want it? Well, it's an opportunity that I think our, our kids, you know, they're welcome, you know, and, and we, we're going to prepare for OU and, and get, a, get a game plan together, you know, to, to, to try to beat them. But we understand that we respect everything they do. Venable is a really good coach. Um, I went against him when he was at Clemson. He's a really good defensive coordinator. Now he's a head coach. So I know, you know, some of the things that they was doing on defense, they're going to do when they're at Clemson. So we understand that. But it's a big opportunity for the players. And I think they're excited. What's jumped out about OU in their first two wins? When you look at them on film, just the first two wins. They're a solid football team. They, they, they play really good defense. They're solid in special teams. And they're really good on offense. You, would you like to see anything change in the way that they tackle and practice tackling? Well, I thought they tackled good today. You know, I think that when they have the opportunity to do it, you know, I think they, they do it well. We just got it's something that it's muscle memory, something that you got to do a lot to, to get it done. Tackling's not easy. You know, I, I think what happens when, when I talk to my brother, he says, what happens when they get, when he gets college defensive backs? You know, one, they don't process real well because they play nothing but man. And two, they don't tackle real well. So when we say we have to address the tackling issue, you can't attack it. You can't attack the tackling issue without tackling. And that's what we did. Nick, can you um, yeah. back Nick or Travis to back? <clears throat> They're both a day to day. Nicky, how are you guiding Casey Thompson through this whole process? Well, I mean, Casey, Casey's a really smart kid, you know, comes from a really good family. So Casey understands situations like this. But Coach Whipple's going to continue to guide Casey. And, and Casey, I, I've been knowing Casey since he's been a kid. So Casey understands that I'm still going to be the same old coach for him, you know, and, and get on him when I need to get on him and hug him when I need to hug him. But as far as, you know, guiding him, he understands. He's going, he falls in, and he's a really good leader. But like I said, he's a really intelligent kid. A lot of questions about the 
questions have been about the defense, obviously, but how, how do you feel the offensive staff has gelled and we're at that right now? I think they're in a good a good place. I think they're in a good place. I think um, they understand that their job is to score points and their job is to score one more point than their opponents. And I think they understand that. But they, they ain't in a good place right now. What are some moments maybe in your career path, Mickey, that you can point to that say these moments prepared you for now for this opportunity? Well, I think if, if you look at my resume, I've been on every level, NAIA, D2, FCS, HBCU, you know, group of five, power five. So I got an opportunity to be under a lot of head coaches, a lot of real good head coaches. So it prepare you for this moment and it, that when you do get this opportunity that it's not too big for you. But at the end of the day, I have to be myself. And that's who I am, you know, I am, and this is who I am. And I'm going to be the same person I was, and I depend on relationships with the kids, and I, it depends on, and I tell them that I'm going to be truthful with them. And that's how I survived in this profession. How did your Louisiana upbringing help talk you right Well, when you're from New Orleans and you live down there, shake everything off and you move on, you press on. And Mickey, they would, sometimes people say that the, the football team takes the personality of their head coach. What parts of your personality do you hope rub off on this team? I, I, granted, this week might be tough, but at the end of the day, at the end of the season, what do you hope Nebraska takes from me? Well, that, that I'm going to be detailed, I'm going to be high energy, and I expect them to, to lay, leave it out all on the field. And I thought today at practice they did that. Can you take us back to when you were playing against Oklahoma specifically, the feeling in the locker room, the tradition, the whole thing, a little different back then, but just for those who Sort of want to reminisce pregame here. Well, you knew when the Oklahoma week was. You, you, you knew. The fans let you know. The coaches will let you know. The students will let you know. So you knew it was a big game. And you knew that, you know, that they were going to come in. They was going to be just as talented as you. Because at that time, you know, it was, it was OU, Nebraska, and um, Colorado. You know, that was the three top dogs. So you knew when OU game. And you was, you was excited because you got to play a really good football team. And, um, and you knew this was your opportunity to come out and, um, and, fr and show the world that you was a really good football team. And I think to this, this opportunity this weekend, that's what our kids are looking forward to. All right. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, guys. <laughs>